Hello learners, this is Easy Engineering. Today, we're going to talk about another fun topic in physics. It is all about magnets and magnetic fields. Let us start our lesson with magnets. There are two different kinds of magnets, an electromagnet and a permanent magnet. They may be quite different from each other, but these magnets are just caused by the same thing. An electromagnet is a magnet created by electricity. The other kind of magnet is called the permanent magnet because people thought it that it would last forever. In reality, permanent magnets can only last up to thousands of years, but still, that is still a very long time. The permanent magnets can lose their magnetism over time, especially if they get hot. Now, let's discuss about the basic properties of magnets. Magnets have a north and south pole. Two of the same pole will repel each other while opposites attract. Sometimes magnets have more than one set of poles, but they always come in pairs. That is why no matter how many times you cut a magnet in half, it always or it will always contain both poles. Materials that contain iron can be magnets. This can be called ferromagnetic. These metals are attracted to magnets, even though they aren't magnets themselves like the metal in your refrigerator door. So what is a magnetic field? A magnetic field can be illustrated using field lines just like an electric field. And though they will appear to begin at the north pole of the magnet and end at the south pole, they have no true ends which means that they go on through the magnet itself. There's also a magnetic field around earth which is why you can use a compass to figure out which way is north. The magnet in the compass aligns itself with the earth's magnetic field. It has a magnetic north pole and a magnetic south pole. These magnetic poles exist because of the way atoms are distributed in Earth's iron core, which align their spins just like the atoms in a bar magnet. Have you ever seen the aurora borealis or the so-called northern lights? It's beautiful, isn't it? Well, this phenomenon has something to do with magnetism. You see, if the Earth is in the path of the particle stream, our planet's magnetic field and atmosphere react when the charged particles from the sun strike atoms and molecules in earth's atmosphere they excite those atoms causing them to light up amazing right now let's go back to our topic an easy way to remember the relationship of the magnetic field is through the use of right hand rules there are three right hand rules let us discuss them one by one the first right hand rule can show the direction of the electric current and the direction of the magnetic field it produces relate to each other. Just take your right hand and point your thumb in the direction of the electric current. Now curl your fingers. The direction your fingers are curling, that's the way the magnetic field lines are pointing. And likewise, if you know the direction of the magnetic field lines, you can use the rule to figure out the direction of the current in the wire. The direction of the force from a magnetic field on a current running through a wire will be perpendicular to both the magnetic field and the current, which brings us to the second right hand rule. This one helps you keep track of three directions, the direction of the magnetic field, the current, and the force. Here's how to use the second right hand rule. Point your arm in the direction of the current, then bend your fingers so they're perpendicular to your palm. This represents the direction of the magnetic field. Your thumb, which is perpendicular to your fingers, is the direction of the force on the wire. Finding the direction of this force is where the third right hand rule comes. Straighten your fingers with your thumb stretch outward. Then point your arm in the direction of the particle's velocity. Then bend your fingers to make them point in the direction of the magnetic field lines. This is where things get a little tricky. If the charged particle is positive, your thumb is pointing in the direction of the force. But if it's negative, the force is pointing in the direction opposite to your thumb. So that's all of it. So did you enjoy our topic for today? I hope you certainly did. See you again next time for more interesting and fun topics only here in Peace Engineering. We make engineering topics easy and fun to you.